So again, let's bring Barbara up. Let's get the people to work here today. Time to go to work. excited to be here and so thankful that I've gotten a chance to share this eight hours with you by the end here tonight. And in your defense on that homework, this is a graduate level course, so um, <laughs> it is a graduate level course. So if you've been able to stay here and kind of understand the things that uh, we're doing, I'm sure when I get it accredited, they're going to accredit it as a, as a um, graduate level course, so feel good about that. And I was very impressed with you all when you were writing your mission statements and your goals just with a couple of instructions. So I was thinking if I had been able to help you with each one of those, you would have uh, been a lot farther along. So it taught me something for the next go round on that particular homework. We may just do it in class. <laughs> that way we won't have that issue. Um, I went back to session three so that I could go over this again and make sure that you got a good understanding of what I was meaning when I want you to use the short form. And at the very end, since today's form is not nearly as detailed as this form, which was last week's form, um, <clears throat> I think you will better understand the full temple, which is what you're going to be working with. So let's just go back up and kind of review again this template. So your executive summary, we're going to answer the questions, who, what, when, where, and why. Follow along with me and kind of give, I want some feedback on this one. And we are working with um, the practicum one writing of the grant uh, sheet. Who, what, when, where, and why. And that's the one where you had the homework <coughs> and you had to answer the question. So when you answer the first question about your history, your history always includes a sentence about when you were incorporated, when you started, and your mission statement. That's it. And so the rest of the questions are pretty much self-explanatory, but though that's that first question, and almost all grants start that way. So if you um, keep this one out, but thumb through the documents I gave you today, you will see a full grant. Now that is my grant template that I put together that kind of serves as the beginning place for me when I'm writing grants for people. And you will see the executive summary there. And as you look through that, and I'm sorry to staple on the right instead of on the left, because since it was landscape, couldn't really tell how to staple it. But if you, as you look through there, you will see an executive summary. And that executive summary would be the one that you would use. So a lot of the writing is already done for you. All you have to do is put this on your own system. You will have to type it on your own system because this is a document that is still in development. So you've got the beta test. And you will be able to type the same document. So what it will give you is a template that you can use over and over and over again that has been successful. I tell you, I've had a lot of successes with that document down through the years, and I believe you will have successes. And all you have to do is, wherever there's bold print, you are going to put your name, unless it's a title. Wherever there's bold print within the document, you're going to replace it with your information. And the sheet that I gave you last week, with the little fill in the blank, uh, where it gave you some titles, and then you fill those in, uh, not that one, is there's a, another one. I'll, don't have the title. Yes, uh, what is that title? Form. Grant intake form. Grant intake form. Right. If you fill out that grant intake form, it has all of those answers on it, so you'll be able to glance at that and look back quickly at your document and fill it in. Today, when we take our five-minute break, I'm going to give you an assignment during that time, and that is to look that over and see if, there, if there's anything there that you can't answer. If there's anything there that you don't know what it is, then you want to see me so that I can make sure that I answer that for you. But there shouldn't be but maybe two or three on that whole document that you can't answer. Because usually it's your organization name, your organization acronym. And for those of you who want a miracle tonight, I think uh, Pastor here already got a miracle. He got his acronym. You need a miracle? Maybe I'll be getting those miracles. Because every now and then those, those acronyms just drop in my spirit. And I can say, hey, what about this? And the person might like it. Uh, I gave one pastor an acronym and he says sister right that was my phone number years ago it was Liv and then it Liv spelled out something and he was amazed that he was amazed that he's going to be now but he was amazed at how 
um, the acronym that I had given him had been the phone number that he had had for years. I think it was still his phone number. Um, so who, what, when, where, why, and, and how much? So I'm not going to go back to the executive summary because I've given you got a good copy of an executive summary there. And uh, at the end of that executive summary, when you're saying the how much, you're also going to talk about how you all are working together. Now, if you look at that sample I've given you, it's written. Just put your information in it. Just put your information in it. Okay, the needs assessment tells who are you serving and why, and we already went over this last week, but if you look at that grant document that I gave you today, you will see a needs assessment that started for you. But in that needs assessment, what I did was I included all of the research uh, areas and research websites that you can go to and kind of look at to find more information. Yes? Is this the grant document? Yes, that's the grant document. Grant document. Two pages per sheet because it would be a lot longer than that. Now, now the only thing that's extra in that document, at the, when you get to the back, and I'm not sure what page, it will say these are not to be attached to the grant document. Those are like sample letters of support, so those are written for you too. So you've got a nice little start there, and there's a list of different things that you need to organize and have electronically ready in the back of that document. So that I won't slow you down anymore. I'll go, we'll go through it together a little bit later. But just know there's a little bit more than a grant there. And the reason it looks real small is because it's, I think it's printed, is it printed back to back? Yeah. It's printed back to back and you've got uh, two sets. So it's four pages on a sheet. So that's why it looks kind of small. But if it was uh, all the pages, it would be about 20 pages, I think. Okay. So back up here, just hang on to that because if you're not sure what a needs assessment looks like, you've got one in your hand, okay? Uh, so that needs assessment is who you're serving, that's about a sentence and why, a sentence or two. And then the national problem is usually next. You can flip-flop the national and local problem, just don't put too many paragraphs on the national problem. Remember, if you put too many on the national problem, the readers will say they're not addressing the local problem. So that's why you might want to put the local problem first, then the national problem. But I find that it's probably best to address the national in just a paragraph, and then the local problem gets maybe three paragraphs, and the very last paragraph of your needs assessment should always be how you will fix the problem. And that's only a paragraph, how you will fix the problem. If you look at the sample, I think the last paragraph is already there for you and all you have to do is put your name in. So in most cases in this template, your name should be there. So now you have a federal grant, because I would call that my federal grant template. And that other one that I gave you the other night that has the goals and objectives, that would be your foundation template. The, the one that I gave you the other night with the goals and objectives that looks kind of like this, that's filled in, that would be the one you would use just for your foundations because it's not as dirty. The one that, uh, let's see if you can figure out the one I'm talking about. Um, I, I see I'm going to have to number them on the next go round, so, because um, I know you got a lot of documents. It's, let's see if I can see one to show you. That one. What is it called? The grant writing template? Grant Planning Canvas. The Grant Planning Canvas. Okay, hold that up for me. The Grant Planning Canvas. So I would not number them uh, one and two. And number one would be the one that Pastor Urban has in his hand, which is the grant with the pen on the front page. That would be the federal grant template. That would be the one that you would be using for the federal grants and the, large, the grants that require more information. Yes, and the grant, the one that does not, uh, that is for the grants that do not require as much information is called the grant planning template. So both of those are pretty much full, fully written grants. Okay, but, oh, hold on just a second. Okay. This is for federal? Okay. That one's for, this is for the foundation, uh, state, small grants that only want 350 words. That's for those basic grants. That's this one here. No. That one, 
Oh, the other one. The other one, yes. It's just for the basic, basic grants. Which is the basic? This one here? That's the basic grants. Uh huh. Those 350 word grants, like the Ford grant and stuff. That's it. That's it. That one's only for basic foundation grants. Mm -hmm. Basic foundation grants. It is actually this filled out. Right. That's what it is. It's this filled out. So you don't have to do anything from scratch. Mm -hmm. It's all done for you. All, all you have to do is type it up. <laughs> you have to type it up. <laughs> you have to type it up. But it's done for you. You have the information so you don't have to go find information. Now you can because it is better if you can go find a, if you are looking for a veterans grant, it's better to, you know, to have a sample veterans grant so that you can make it better. Because that is written generically. And uh, you're going to put what you're doing in there and that's what personalizes it. But if you're not sure how to write yours in best practices, you may want to go find a veterans grant if you're working with veterans. Or if you're working with housing, you may want to find a sample housing grant. But you are not starting from scratch. If you use that, it will help you in putting your template together. Because what you're going to have to do is put your template together. Now, if I was putting the template together for you and handing you a template in your hand, then that, that's going to be a different price. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you some extra things. Because this is basically all I teach when I'm at JCCC and UMKC. But I wanted you to have something extra in your hand to help get you to that next level. To make you really feel empowered to write this grant. Because you can. I'm telling you, I was very impressed with goals and objectives that I saw in just one little lesson. So I do believe that you can do this if you will. If you will. And usually what gets a person, what makes sure that you don't get a grant is if you stop trying. That will make sure that you don't get a grant. If you continue to try, you will get the grant. You have to keep trying. Okay, so um, your goals is what you're going to do, remember? Your objective is how you're going to do it. Your objective is what you're going to do. Your goal is what you're going to do. Your objective is how you're going to do it. Your implementation is what? When you're going to do it. So you might want to write that out to the side if you didn't do it the other day. Your goal is what you're going to do. Your objective is how you're going to do it. And if you look at the template that is for the basic grants, you'll see it's all there for you. You're not going to be doing much different than what's on the grant uh, template with the columns. Not the federal grant, but the grant template with the columns. <coughs> if the federal grant asks for a logic model, in addition to the grant, mm -hmm. the columns is a logic model for your program. The column, the template, mm -hmm. it would be a logic model. This that's already filled out. It would be your, so you know, you've got everything you need for almost every type of grant there is. Yes? So now you're not saying that we took some bit of grant that looks just exactly like that. It's written out. You're gonna, you're gonna uh, take the goals and put them wherever they ask for it. They're gonna ask okay. you for their goals and okay. usually they give you a template. And you're just taking the information and copy cutting and pasting. Gotcha. You have all the information you need. All you need to do is type it in their box. Because see, they're going to, for the basic grants, you're applying online. It's, there's no more, more no more handwriting and typing and all of that on anything other than their website, 90% of the time. Very few of them, like I did a lactation grant for, well, I'm helping Trinity do a lactation grant so that women can go and breastfeed their babies at church. Uh, and it's all written for you. You just, I mean, the, the setup, the template is already there. You just take your information and put it in the template. Almost any grant you can name is already out there for the basic grants. So that information on those columns is quick to the point so that you can get those 350 word grants. Now the other grant, the full grant that I gave you is for the federal grants. Those million dollar grants, the two million dollar grants for those. You have a document that can get you a hundred million dollar grant if you use it. If you use it. Now, don't, don't go spread, spread the word that the other group will get all the same thing that you got because it's going to be revised and I'll have to work with the, the, the boss over there. But um, make sure that 
you know that you have everything you need for every type of grant there is. Okay? All right, so who, what, when, what does the evaluation ask for? How many How many you're going to serve? How many you're going to serve, and how are you going to um, know you served them? So what would be a way that you would be able to know that you served them? Or what would be your defense if somebody said, well, what proof do you have that you served <coughs> what proof would you have? Questionnaire, sign-in Questionnaire, survey, sign-in sheets, <laughs> your collaborative reports. Those, that's your documentation. So you want to have some substantiation that you actually did what you said. Sign-in sheets, all of that. The next one is outcome, or the last one on this one is outcome. Does anybody remember what outcome is? The results. That's, you could put a one word in there, results. So your evaluation is how many and proof. How many and the proof that you serve that number and your outcome is just a proof. Uh, the elderly adult day care, which I'm interested in, uh, I did look out on the uh, division of elderly, and they give you all the requirements and what have you. And they start out with eight participants. Starting with your first participant, you have to have one worker and up to eight, one additional worker. Now, when you mention about the results, okay? When you mention about the results, let's say I get eight participants, that's what they call the elderly, who comes to the center, okay? But they are not consistent. However, I got them on roll that they are a participant. You know, some people make mistakes or what have you. Will that affect my results as far as the um, donors, that is? This is the thing. You have to know your business, mm -hmm. your organization. Yes. You have to know your organization. And if you are working with ex-offenders, you want to not say, 100% is going to be successful. You're going to have a lot that are successful, but you're going to have some that's going to recidivate. So you have to be very careful to, to look at the industry. If you're working with homeless veterans, there is a percentage out there that will continue to be homeless. So you don't want to say 100% is going to do this or that or the other. So you have to be very careful and make sure that you are given successes that you can, that you already know, you can meet. So if you want to say 100% of your collaborative will meet, but that's because you're going to open them up to doing Skype. You're going to open them up to doing email, Google Docs, communicating with you in other types of ways. So you can say you will have 100% of your collaborative to meet with you on a monthly basis because they can meet from wherever they are. They can call in on the phone and just listen on speakerphone. And that constitute they were there. And you have them sign in electronically. So some things you can substantiate. Other things you can't substantiate. If you know that some are going to come, some are not, that, one, that wouldn't be one of your evaluative components. So be very careful about your evaluative components. Your, whatever you say in that evaluation, it needs to be something that you can definitely substantiate. Now what you're going to say instead of everybody's going to come 100% of the time is that 100% of the participants will complete the intake form. 80% um, um, of the participants or 70% of the participants will attend at least 90% of the time. So whatever you say you want to be able to substantiate. Okay. Okay. Now use your book when it comes to this form because I have not put a budget at the bottom of the little practice uh, basic grant that I gave you, the columns, the logic model. I haven't put uh, a budget down below that. But I have put it in your book. So if you look at your book, you will see the areas that should have some budget. That's your implementation and your evaluation. Now the evaluation is not going to have a whole lot of budget, and your imp but your implementation budget might be large. Because that's where you're going to buy your supplies, that's where you're going to give out stipends, that's where you're going to do a lot of things. And I only have three budget areas up there under implementation. You might have ten. 
or six or five. So remember, this is just a template. So you add what you need. Look out at some other templates for your type of organization. Look for templates on Google and type images because they will give you some great template images and you might find everything you need from an image and not even have to go to another website. I'm, a, I'm an avid researcher and I find most of what I need on Google Docs on the images because I want an image of a, um, an evaluation. And it will show me the graphics of that evaluation. And a lot of times I don't even have to go no farther than that. I can print that out and not even have to go any farther. So keep that in mind as you go. Now on your flash drive, you also got stats down at the bottom, miscellaneous, and research. So now I'm going to move us on into tonight's lesson, which is finalizing the grant. So those first five columns in the logic model, it's prob probably easiest if you follow along in your book, but you want to be glancing back and forth at your tip, uh, logic model column template. You want to be glancing back and forth at that. This full grant is for FYI, and we'll go through that after she gives us our five-minute break. We will go through the full grant, but we're not using that as much right now. We're just using your logic model template. Let me see everybody's logic model template. I want to make sure that we are all on the same page. Dave's trying to slow me down. Wait a minute. Let's, let's <laughs> Um, no, I want the, the one that I gave you all the other night, the one that Pastor Urban has right there, that. The logic model. The logic model template. Um, the one that I gave you the other night. Yeah, you're on the right page. So you should be on this page in your book. But while we're working on this page, I want you to have the uh, basic grant uh, template out, the logic model. You've got it. You've got it. Hold it up. I just want to make sure that we're all working on the same thing. Um, that one. Mm -hmm, that one. Yes. You have it, Pastor. So she she can show you guys back there. So we're all working on the same thing. Okay. All right. That's that one. So the reason I want you to have that out is because that logic model template, the basic grant, is this already filled out. Just remember, that's the last half of it. So the first five sections of it is the actual programming. So whenever anybody is working with your organization to develop a program, they should fill out the first five. But you can't do the first five without the last five because the last five goals is your management goals. The first five is programming. And the last five is management. So this timeline, it's talking about your management timeline. So somebody that can read kind of loud from the basic grant, tell me what you are doing in that. Well, let me read this first. On your booklet, it says, what is your timeline for implementation? And then it gives you quarter one, and then it gives you activities one, two, and three. And on your logic model there on the timeline, look for the timeline, it's the fifth column. Tell me what are some of the things that you should be doing on goal two for your timeline. On goal two for your timeline. This is your administrative timeline. What does it say? Doesn't have a lot of room there, so it can't say a whole lot, but it gives you some things that you should be doing. Quarter meetings. Quarter, quarter meeting. one quarter meeting. Quarter meetings. meetings. Okay. With all stakeholders and selection of project director. Okay. So in that first quarter, you should be doing what? Yeah. Having meetings with your um, stakeholders. stakeholders and doing what else? Selection of project director. You're writing your grant. That's exactly right. That's what you should be doing. Selecting your project director. Now, what if you already got the project director? That's done. So you don't have to have that in that particular grant. You can just start labeling, you know, naming your project director. But when you're just getting started, you want your project director. Now initially, you might be the president, project director, the executive director, and you might be everybody. But eventually, you'll be hiring a project director. Yes? What does a project director do? The project director actually runs the program. So did I have you draw 
a graphic organizer or your organizational chart with you up here, yeah. and then we do the line down and the rectangle. Right. That project director, when you can afford that project director, they actually handle the programming side of it, and that allows you to do administration. But until you get them, you're doing both. Yes. In your budget, is it, it does it allow for the compensation for that project director? The project director, I tell uh, pastors this a lot. Project director can make up to sixty-four five usually for almost any organization, and that may have increased to seventy-five thousand. So your project director can make money. Now, don't make the mistake of offering your project director sixty-four five, and you have like uh, all that other stuff to pay. You, you got insurance, you got all these other benefits you want to give them. So the 645 includes all benefits. Okay. So you want to look and see, um, you, you're going to become a little bit familiar with governmental regulations because the government does have some regulations about what a project manager, manager can make. Now, do you know that NFL is a nonprofit organization? As much money as they make? So can you imagine what their project director makes? So what you have to look at is salaries.com, um, the labor department, and see what the market salary is. Because depending on what you're doing, the market salary might be a little higher or it might be a little lower. Yeah, he made 10 million. Yeah, exactly. So it depends on what the market is. That kind of market is not the same as, you know, some other market. You can pay market salaries for whatever you know. You need to know what those market salaries are. And they are published. It's free information. Okay, so that's your second quarter. What's in your third quarter for your, uh, um, not your third quarter, your third goal and timeline? What's on there? On your, now, we're looking at the basic logic model, the columns, the one that's already filled out for you that you have. What's on there? Meetings. 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 So we're meeting monthly for all stakeholders. Every every month, every quarter, we're meeting to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our organization. Okay. What is? Is there anything else down there under the timeline? Selection of project. Well, is that on the third one? No, it's uh, inter uh, purchasing and leasing or renovation. Purchasing, leasing, or renovating your building. Okay, yeah, the third one is great. Okay, purchasing, okay, is there anything else under there? No. So if you are not purchasing, renovating, or leasing a building, would you have that on there? No. But most of us are going to be doing something because even if you're using your church, there's a rental fee. Even if you're using somebody else's establishment, there's a fee. So you are always looking at some type of lease, rental, or something. You put it in, even if it's going to be an in-kind donation. Do you know what in-kind donation is? In-kind donation is anything that anyone gives to you instead of cash. So if Walmart gives you a loaf of bread, guess who's your partner? Walmart. Walmart. A girl called me from uh, North Carolina. I did her five months and three a few years ago. And uh, she's like, well, I'm, I'm having trouble developing my collaborative. I said, are you the same person that sat in front of Walmart for I don't know how many months to raise the money to pay for your 501c3? I said, they're your partner. Yes. So uh, <clears throat> we have to look into the aspect of the foundation's headquarters or the address of that resident. Uh, like when you have a home-based business. It's a home-based business, yeah. And you have a certain section of your home dedicated to that business. Exactly. So then we have to right look into uh, uh, what the tax advantages are going to be for that residence when your foundation is uh, located in that residence. Right. So there has to be some type of lease agreement. But now that's yes. going beyond my legal uh, standing and I try to stay out of their way. So uh, you want to go further than me on what the legalities of that are. Right. But I do believe that you're doing business, so you can write off the section. If you're using your whole basement, with like for child care, I think it's like 70%, but child care is the only business that's like that if you're doing child care in your home. But other businesses, it's a smaller amount, but yes, you can write some of that off. Is it 30% for child care? Well, okay. no, no. 
thirty percent for anything else. That's what I thought. I thought, but childcare gets a whole bunch if you're doing childcare at home. But if you're doing any other business, um, there's not as much. I had a booth down at Forty Highway. Really, kind of the booth got on my nerves, but it was a great tax write-off because I could write on my miles, and I'm a thrift, thrift store queen. So every time I'm going to the thrift store to look for stuff to put in that booth, that's fifty-seven cents a mile. Yes. And yes, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing right now, uh, a project uh, to get uh, a couple of tax professionals trained in, you know, the tax positions of having the foundation in your home. So I'll be bringing them in to do a session for right. the organization also. Right. And you can do a research, but I haven't done the research, so I wouldn't even want to say it as a good friend. Sometimes I'll say, well, you, you know, as a good friend or, you know, as my sister. I, I would say this or that or the other, but I, I'm not, I can't even go to the group, you know, as your sister on this one. So I would rather you get uh, clarification from someone with true information. Yes. It's on that I've been doing a home based business for a number of years, and you have to measure it's in square yes. feet. They allow you the number of square feet that are set aside exclusively for your business, and they got some tough rules on there. Right. That's well, why I said if you have a basement. You know, like I said, I'll be bringing a couple of uh, people in on that. So. And what's better than the square footage now is your mileage. Mm -hmm. That's even better because you don't have proof. I mean, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, management. Um, who will manage your program? What are their credentials? How much will they be paid? Are they going to be full time, uh, set, um, part time contractors? I noticed that I went through and did an all cleanup, and I, wherever I had part time partners, it changed it to set. But that should say part time or contractors. So look at the uh, logic model template, the columns again and see what you're doing under management um, for the first month. Under management, the, I mean the first goal. Under management, what are you doing under management for the goal one? Somebody, goal one. Under management. Management, okay. I don't think we have a management problem. Um, uh, management, you should have timeline and then salary. salary. What's under salary? The salaries of goal one will include the following uh, FT, executive director. Okay, full time executive director. So your full, your executive director is sometimes full time, but sometimes the, the grant will not allow a full time director because it's only a part time program. So when you're writing up that budget, you might have to say, 20% FTE if you're only going to do that 20% of the time. If you're going to do it 50% of the time, 50% FTE. Now for those of you who are doing full-time programs, then yours would be um, full-time. But if you are only doing 20 hours a week, then it would be half-time, um, part-time FTE or 20%. Or 40%, 30%. So remember, everything is in percentages of some kind. So you could do 100% FTE, but usually when it's 100%, they just say FTE. But if you are doing three or four or five different grants, you're probably not going to be 100% of the time on all of those grants. You're only going to be a percentage of time. So you don't want to get into trouble with that. If you're doing it full-time, then it's full-time. But if it's only a percentage of the time, then it's a it's a percentage of the time. But if it's a part-time venture, then you are part-time. So you got to figure out those salaries. Is there something else under that? Um, Not under employees, project director. Okay, so that's, that's under that's two. All. So that kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that you should be doing in each one of those different goals. Now remember, goal four is only implementing what you had said you were going to do in one, two, and three. See, if you get a planning grant, you're doing goals one, two, and three. So uh, on that uh, column template that you have, which is this spelled out, you have four goals. 
Can you look and see on the right hand column how it's divided up into uh, four goals? Your, so your first goal is collaborative development. I want to make sure that you are, we are in the same place. So look down at the second group and tell me what the name of that is. On the journey. Mm -hmm. you know, on the logic model. Okay. Build the program. Build the program. Yeah, I want to make sure we're in the same place. Okay, flip it. Go to the third one. And what is the third one? Coordinate the program. Coordinate the program. So one, two, and three is a planning grant. Four is the implementation grant. You only add the fourth one if you are doing implementation. So you have four different goals for any grant. That's why I said this will work for almost every uh, small grant because you've got four goals. Now, are all of them going to ask for everything on that sheet? No. Some of them only want what you're going to do and how you're going to do it and maybe the time frame and the, and the price. Some of them only want your goals, objectives, and the budget. So what I did is I gave you all the columns, but most grants will not ask for all of that. You have it so that it can help you. But don't give them any more than what they ask for. Only give them what they ask for. Okay, so on, if you go down to goal, so now you'll know what I'm talking about when I say go to goal number one, goal number two, goal number three, goal number four. And four comes in where? When you're ready to implement. If it is an implementation grant, because some grants don't want you to implement, but most of the smaller grants want you to do everything. They want you to do one, two, three, and four. But when you start going with the federal grants, a lot of times they will give you one year to practice and plan. And then the next year you go back and apply again and you will receive a preference to, a, to, to actually implement. But for the state grants and the foundation grants and the corporate grants, when they give you that money, they want you to implement. They want you to do it from start to finish. So that would be goals one, two, three, and four. What is goal one again? Build your collaborative program. Build your collaborative. Oh. Goal two. Build your program. Build your program. What is goal three? Coordinate the program. Coordinate the program. That means who's going to deliver? Who's going to go out and do what you said you were going to do? And what is goal four? Implement. Implement the program. Let's go over that again because that is key to understanding this whole process. So what is goal one? Build. 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 What if you already done it? Done. So all you're going to do is you're going to tell them about your collaborative. Yes. You, you built your collaborative and that you're going to continue to meet. Okay, what is goal two? Build program. In building that program, who are you going to use to help you put that together? Organization. The collaboratives. Your other businesses, yes, but they're called collaboratives. Your collaborative partners are going to help you build that program. Now, are you going to them empty-handed? No. You're going to them with both barrels loaded. You need to know what you want to do before you get there, because otherwise, somebody is going to tell you what to do. <laughs> so when you get there, you need to already have a basic logic model. Now, what do you take to a new partner when you're trying to get them to come on board? You don't take that whole grant. You don't give anybody this once you type that up. You don't give anybody that. The most you're going to talk to them about is your logic model. Go one, two, three, four, the document we're working with right now. This filled out. That's the most you're going to share. And I don't recommend sharing all of that. I recommend you share in the first two columns. Your goals, your objectives, and your budget. And maybe not even the budget just yet. Go one. Go uh, no. Your um, you can share share your three goals, and you can share your uh, objective, and possibly the budget. But that's the most that I would be sharing. That's the most that I would be sharing with anyone to try to build collaborative. Once you got your collaborative, then you start to share. But you want to get them on board with the program that you're trying to develop. Now, are you open to change? Yes. If somebody has a better idea, of course. But you're not giving away everything. So make sure that you use that as your introduction or a portion 
of that as your introduction, not your whole grant. Okay. So, does anybody not understand the management section? Are you understanding now how to go through that logic model and why that little logic model, and which I'm calling also a basic grant, and to understand how that works together? Every grant has those components. Every one, whether it is a foundation grant, state grant, corporate grant, federal grant, they all have those components. Do they have them all? No. When I say all of them, I'm talking about what I call my Big Ten from left to right. So let's say what the Big Ten is. Uh, read the headers from left to right at the top. What are the headers? Objectives, goals, 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 goals objectives, implementation, implementation, evaluation, evaluation outcome, timeline, salary, discrimination, and sustainability. The one that's left off is budget. So they're not, they may not ask you for all of those. They may only want goal, objective, budget. If that's what they ask for, that's what you give them. They may want goal, objective, Evaluation budget. If that's all they ask for, that's all you give them. They may want goal, objective, evaluation, timeline, budget, outcome. They may want it all. Then that's the only time you give it to them is when they want it all. But they're going to tell you what they want. You don't have to be shooting in the dark. They're going to tell you exactly what they want. And then that's when you give it to them. Especially if you're trying to get up to $500,000. And I would say up to 250 for sure, 250,000. You can get those types of grants from corporations, from government agencies. Okay. Okay, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get this done. We got good time tonight, so the questions that you guys have, I will try to answer them. Um, in management, you're gonna have. Um, your management, your collaborative, you will have the word stakeholder. Somebody asked me about the word stakeholder. So I want to make sure that everybody has a clear understanding as much as I can give you for the word stakeholder. A stakeholder is any person who has a stake in your success and the community's success. So anyone. Now how would the businesses have a stake in a church's success. Because I'm in a church, I'm being a church. The operating donation. Well, the stake means they get they get a benefit. Mm -hmm. Oh. Why would the church get a benefit in the church being in the community? Why? Why would they have a why would they benefit from the church being in the community? Ooh. Hopefully cut down crime. Because the church has yeah, members. The, the church has members that might go and shop at that store. So they're potential buyers. But they also teach ethics, moral values. So maybe they can get some employees from the church. That would be the state. Why would the school want to partner with the church? That's a part of the community. Grades. Uh, the church might have some ACT programs. Some things that can't be done at school could be done at the church. That's why they might partner. So your stakeholder is anyone who would be willing to partner with you. The best stakeholders are the ones that have something to lose by you not succeeding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say that again. The best stakeholders are the ones who have something to lose by you not succeeding. If you don't succeed, they lose. So in most cases, the community as a whole is a stakeholder. Because the community loses when our kids are not educated. The community loses when we don't have decent moral values and you know we don't treat people right and that kind of thing. So what does your program offer? If she when she gets play up and running, do you mind if I say that? No, no. Okay, when she gets play, her pro, pro, the uh, play program up and running, it's going to provide services that can help a lot of people. They're going to provide a... Do you mind? Okay, they're going to provide a place for people to practice. So, for whatever, um, whatever 
sport and participation, arts and district, whatever it is. So how does that benefit the community? It, brings the kids out it, gets, them it gets them off the street. So you become a prevention place. Because maybe the, the other nonprofit organization that becomes your partner doesn't have a place or can't afford a place, but because you got a grant to provide the place, you can provide them a very low cost place. And I'm telling you, they want social entrepreneuring. So nonprofits have almost become social entrepreneurs because you do have to have some fees for service. So how do you charge? You use a sliding scale fee. A sliding scale fee would be like the free and reduced lunch numbers, and you can get those from the internet. So one person would be charged this, another person would be charged that. I'm seeing a lot of child cares offering scholarships. And I believe that's going to happen a lot more with Donald Trump because he wants to give vouchers. So a whole lot of people that never got vouchers before are going to get those vouchers. Because they want to be able to provide vouchers for kids to be able to go to school of choice. That works for some people, it doesn't work for everybody, but they want to be able to provide the school of choice. So there's going to be vouchers where there never was vouchers before. And I think in early childhood, that's going to be one of the places. So the stakeholders is anyone who stands to lose if you don't succeed. So what does that mean about them? They're going to do everything they can. So whose responsibility is it for your stakeholders to understand their stake? It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to help the stakeholder understand their state. All right. Okay, so dissemination. You got it? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. All right. So how will you inform the stakeholder of your program? You will try to partner with them if they're that immediate stakeholder that makes a difference in your success or failure. Now, the things that I'm talking about for nonprofits this day and time is for business, too. So for those of you who have those business ideas, everything that I have said also fits for regular businesses as well. Uh, and it's even more important now. You cannot be by yourself, even with the for-profits. Um, under the word inform, I have some information. And I, I thought it was good enough to implant it, embed it in here. So let me see where it's going to take us to. I'm not going to show everything. Oh, I know what it is. This is free press releases. If you go to this website, you can distribute, distribute your press release to all 50 states. That's what it is. It's on your flash drive where it says inform. <laughs> it's on your flash drive where it says inform. You can distribute your press release because remember, you need some people to come out and see what you're doing. And to get them to come out, you have to send out those decent press releases. And all press releases are not good. All press releases are not good. So you want to look up some sample winning press releases so that you can write something that people want to hear when you're trying to do your activities. The government requires dissemination of information. Why? Because they want to know, they want the public to know that your program was successful or was it a failure. If it failed, that probably means you're not going to get any more money for that particular program. Does it mean you're not going to get any more money at all? No. It just means that you're not going to get any more money for that particular program. You're going to have to revamp it and come again. So they know that there are going to be some failures. But you do have to keep detailed records. Now, if you took the money and went and bought you a condo or something, then you're going to get in trouble. But if you tried to do what you said you were going to do, and, it, and the people just didn't show up, it did not work. You didn't know this would happen. Like tonight, I didn't have these things numbered, so I could tell you uh, because we're, we're trying something new. So next time I'll know to, to number them. Next time I, I came here expecting to teach like I do at JCCC, and not totally, but basically using the same information. But I found that I needed more. I needed to break down some things more. So a lot of these things I put together this week, I mean last week and this week, as I discovered, okay, I need to say more about this or I need to explain this a little bit better. So now I have to label them a little bit better so you'll know what they are. They're not, it's not all in the book like it was in the past. So um, that's what you have to realize with dissemination. The federal government wants you to put the word out there about your successes and failures. So, you can't hide it under a bushel, like I said the other day. The other thing is, no one else can either. So there's information out there, and you just have to find it. The information is out there that you need to write your successful proposal. 
You just have to make it better. Okay, so what? how do you disseminate? Now, I just gave, there, there's a website built in there where it says inform. There's a website built in there for you to be able to send out press releases nationally, not just locally, nationally. And on that site that I gave you, what happens there is that's where the newscasters go and get their news for the day. Oh my goodness. Okay. And so you may have somebody from CNN or from a website coming in to do your story. That's what happened to a lady uh, that I wrote her uh, 501c3 in Memphis. I mean, Jackson, Mississippi. So somebody picked it up off of that site. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. People will pick it up off the site. <coughs> Other ways, internet, media campaigns, expos, workshops, direct mail. Sustainability is the next one. How will you sustain your program after the grant money is gone? Let's say you've got a good grant. How are you going to sustain the program? You're going to continue to do fundraisers and grant solicitations. That is called funds development. As we said earlier, you cannot hire a grant writer, you have to hire a funds developer. Because a fund developer not only does fundraising, but they also do grants. I highlighted grants on here. I'm not sure what that was about, but I'm going to click it because most of these are really good and they give you some more information. Um, now, whenever you see these, don't let it scare you. Go ahead and click it. Remember the guy who used to walk around with the green question marks? Lusco. Oh yeah. oh yeah. He still has a little bit of information left out there. And this is 101 of the best grants. I assume it was a book that he wrote a while back. But guess what? Grants don't change. So it's the whole thing. And it gives you all of these grants that you may not have even thought about. And you just go down and take a look at the different ones. And some of the links are live and you can click them. So it's 101 different grants. Grant for everything under the sun that you can think of. So make sure that you check that out under that grant. Now throughout this document, there are some grants built in in different places, but I also gave you a list of grants tonight that we're gonna talk about in a, in a minute here. Too. Now, if you are in edit mode and you are not in presentation mode like I was a minute ago, I'm gonna show you how to open this. So I'm gonna go here and click open hyperlink. And hopefully this time you'll be able to see what I thought you would see in a minute ago. Okay. It's on the flash drive. <coughs> you will be able to see it. Does anybody have the flash drive? Is anybody following along? Yeah, I am. Okay, you see it? Okay, awesome. Say the witness that? It's a list of 101 grants, creative grants that you wouldn't even think the one about. By Lesko. This is the one by Lesko. It's just 101 creative grants that he put together, and you just have to go there and click. And it's online. And it's online, yeah. Yeah, see, everything you need is out there somewhere. What I've done is I pulled it all together in one place. So you're not having to look, 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 look. It's all here. Really, everything you need is here. You just got to know how to use it to find it. Okay. Um, let me see, sustainability. Okay, so remember you need the funds developer that can do both grants and fundraisers. And then we're moving over to our budget. Now, uh, budget is in your book, but it's not on that uh, template. Because the budget, where are you gonna get it from? If you fill that template out that's in your book correctly, you're doing your budget as you go. You're working on that budget as you go. You're not doing the budget at the end. It's too hard to do it at the end. You have to work on that budget as you go under each one of those different sections because that's the time when it's fresh on your mind and you can kind of get that budget figured out. Okay, so how much money do you need and how will you spend it? That's what you're answering when it comes to a budget. But now the, but the each or grant is going to tell you exactly what you can ask for. Remember, um, I brought in a sample grant, one of these sample grants that I brought in that you can glance at get, we have time. I got 90000 because I did not read the budget thoroughly. I didn't read what they would not pay for. And every grant has things that they will pay for and things that they won't pay for. So you have to make sure that you read those and then don't ask for the things that they won't pay for. Just ask for the things that they will. Um, I'm going to take you out to a 
sample budget maker that if you tried it last week it wasn't working because their site was down but I tried it today and their site was back up and this is called bizstats.com did I take you there the other day? Mm -hmm. I did take you there so it was working one night so I'm going to make sure that everybody knows if you go down to annual sales and just put in the amount for your annual sales it will give you a basic budget but as I told you, this is, does not speak to grants. This is basically for a for-profit organization. It's for a for-profit. So it doesn't work as well for a non-profit organization. But it does kind of give you an idea, one thing that I like to see, and let me show you that. So if I was looking for $100,000, and I am an educational services organization. I will click ed educational services until I actually get to my budget, which is right here. What I look at on this one is rent. Because if you go out and rent a facility, you want to make sure that your rent is aligned to what you see here. Right. So this is how this could help a for-profit and non-profit because it gives you the ratios. Remember, every budget is a 100% ratio. Right. Now, I have a lot of um, tricks and tips that I use when I'm doing business plans for the for-profit organization. One of them works for the nonprofit as well, because you have to remember a nonprofit is a business. So if you have an idea in mind of what you want to put in your pocket, you have to use this little trick. And the trick says, am I willing to work 40 hours or 80 hours? Did I go over this with you? No. Am I willing to work 40 hours or 80 hours? Somebody tell me. 40. You only want to work 40 hours. What do you want to put in your pocket? Just 8,000? Six, six figures. Okay, so how much? 600? 500? Uh, 200,000. 200,000. If you are starting a business today, if you are my client, I don't even need anything else from you. I just want to know how many hours are you willing to work and how much do you want to put in your pocket. And I can come up with this in about five minutes. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the amount of money you want to put in your pocket times 10. And that's going to tell me how many widgets you have to sell in order to put 200000 in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to generate $2 million mm -hmm. to put that in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Because you really only get 10%. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're willing to work 80 hours, mm -hmm. uh, you would multiply by five. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to take the salary of a couple people. Mm -hmm. Now, you still may have a salary out of that. That's the amount you want left. That's your net profit or your surplus. Did, did everybody get that? Yes, surplus. That's your surplus. Not profit. That's not, well, right, that's your surplus. Well, we're talking about a for-profit. No. But you can also use this basically for your non-profit. If you want to put $100,000 in your pocket and you only want to work about 40 hours, you need to be generating a million dollars. But if you want to work in an organization, you want to help people, you want to do these things, you multiply it by five because that means that you're going to work 80 hours a week. That works for almost any business there is. Now that's why our singers and dancers and actors and all of them get into trouble because the people trick them and tell them we're only going to take 25 cents or we're going to, we're going to take uh, 25 cents on a dollar for every dollar you make off your sales. Well if they take 25 cents off your sales they took your profit and that's why those guys die broke. You've got to remember it's the surplus that you can negotiate with, not the total sales. It's only the surplus. And the surplus is never more than 10%. There might be a few organizations where you got about 20% left. Like child care, I think there's a little bit more of that left in child care. Um, look down there at net profit. Can you see that? Can anybody see that? How much is it? 10 million. But what percentage is it? It's only 10% left. And almost every business that you do is only going to have 10% left. 
So therefore, when you are trying to figure out how much you want to generate, so you're wondering what your wish budget should be for your nonprofit? If you want to put 200000 in your pocket, you've got to generate $2 million in sales. If you want to put 100000 in your pocket, then you've got to generate a million in sales. That's if you want to work a regular week. If you're going to work 80 hours a week, or you're going to do most of the work in the beginning, at least especially in the beginning, then you can multiply by five. Okay. When you say you generate a million dollars in sales, are we to translate that into the nonprofit and saying you need to have a million dollars of donations under management? You need to have a million dollars of collected fees in programs, products, and services okay. for the nonprofit. For the for profit, it is in uh, sales. Right. Which could be program services fees as well. Yes. So when you are thinking of, that's why some people have pipe dreams when they're thinking about how much they're actually going to put in their pocket. Because they don't realize that you have all of that other stuff up there before you get down to the 10%. Now there is salary up there as well. And the salary for this one is 20%. So you might be getting that 20% plus the 10 because you're working 80 hours a week or you're working 60 hours a week. So just as you're making up your wish list budget, think about how much you want to put in your pocket as a nonprofit. And the labor is worthy of his hire. You deserve a salary. Just think about what you want that salary to be and think about whether or not you're going to have to do it in Kansas City, you're going to have to do it in St. Louis, you're going to set up another one over here. And then that's when you might get what you want to put in your pocket. But in order to make that salary, whatever it is you want, now that's the world according to Mark Wright. That's the same thing I tell them about JCCC and UFKC. Some of this stuff is dropping my head. I know it came from somewhere else. But that one works. It actually works. If you write it down, it works. It works. Okay? Um, but you want to know where you're going with your budget when you start. And I start from how much I want to put in my pocket, whether it's for profit or non profit. Now you want to give good service. You don't want to be like the bee. You don't want to get that good sting and go die. You want to give good service. But if you want to put a certain amount in your pocket, you're going to have to put it out. You're going to have to put something. You're going to have to put some, put something out. Or you're going to hire some people to do it for you. Okay. Um, so that's it on that one. It is working. If you go there and it's not working, they're updating it. Because it had to be updated. Okay. So what I want to do from here is I want to give you a brief review and then I want to uh, look at the budget template that's in your um, information that I made up. So we're back to this again. Now this time everything is on one page including the budget. So which one of these categories down here is the actual program? This is the test part. Which columns are programs? Where you're actually developing your program or project development. Because you have become a project developer or a program developer. So this um, is that not did I not put this one in yours? So we're trying to find see if it's in the Look at manager. look at your completed one. That's why I didn't give it to you. You have your completed uh, number your logic model. Look at your logic model. That's what this is. Minus the budget, I think. Is the budget on that one? The budget's not on that one. The first, uh, first, look at the first page. Is that in the manual? I broke it up in the manual. So just look at the um, logic oh. model that I gave you earlier. Okay. It, it has the same thing on it. Pretty much. Yes, your goal, your objective, what else? Implementation. Implementation. What else? Uh, evaluation. Evaluation. Timeline. Evaluation. Timeline. See guys, I didn't give you this one because I broke this one up in your checklist, in your um, no, in your book. But I had given it to you already filled out. So actually what you have filled out is more valuable to you than this blank one up here. Because this blank one is not filled out. You have the blank one. It's just broken up into the two different sections. One section is for your program development. The other section is what management does with the program development goals. Okay? So, what I'm asking you on this one, 
which sections are part of the program development, the initial program development. Which one of the sections is the initial program development? I want to make sure that I get that clear. Goals, objectives. objectives. What else? Implementation. Implementation. Evaluation. Evaluation. Outcome. And outcomes. Is it? No. The first five is actually your project or program development. The last five, which is your timeline, management, dissemination, sustainability, and budget, those all have to do with administration. They have to work together, but those are more administrative functions. The first five are program, programmatic, program development. Now, does the manager have to do with all? Yes, the manager has uh, something to do with all of it. But the first five is where you're actually developing that program. But your management side is this right side. It all works together. So your goal is, again, what you're going to do. What is your objective? How. How are you going to do it? What is your implementation? When. When you're going to do it. What is your evaluation? How many to serve and prove. How many are you going to serve and how do you prove you serve them? Right. Okay? And your evaluation? I'm going to do them. Outcome. Results. The results. What was your increase or decrease? Sometimes it's kind of like the fallacy of accounting. Sometimes you want an increase, sometimes you want a decrease. If you're doing something positive, you want an increase. When you got debt, do you want an increase or a decrease? decrease. You want a decrease. Yes. When you collect the money, do you want an increase or a decrease? Yes. Increase. So that's kind of like accounting. I was teaching that today. Okay. Yes. Okay, let me get, get something straight okay. here with the outcome. Uh, if we're putting in a grant, mm -hmm. the outcome seems like that would be more for reapplying no. for another grant. How they you want projections. Oh, okay, so I was about to say, how are you going to know the outcome if Good you have to initiate the program? They want you to project. Okay. The same way you know how many widgets. We're going to project that you're going to use the sweat of your brow to get to, or you're going to use creativity, ingenuity, other people, partners, whatever, to get to where you want to end up. Okay. It's projections. There is a lot of guesswork and projections in grant writing. That's why you may not win. Yes? Is that the same place where the statistics go? Yes. Well, your statistics are going to go throughout the grant. Uh, the statistics are going to go throughout. To help you with that, don't worry about statistics. Do you have the sample grant that I gave you? It will tell you where the stats go. So use that. Use that. We'll, we'll go back to it in just when, you know, in a minute. Okay, let me finish this one. Okay, so you got the outcome. Keep that, keep that in mind in case I don't clear it up for you. Okay, timeline. What does the timeline tell us? What you need to be doing at what time to meet the goals of the grant. So that's the management part. What's going to be done by everyone in the organization? That's why you do that little organizational chart the other day. And you're going to have job descriptions so that you know what everybody's supposed to be doing. Okay? So just because it's a nonprofit, it's still a business. I know you have lots of job descriptions for different people to make sure the daycare runs smoothly. And whatever other businesses you're running. And job descriptions, timelines. What if you don't know what the person's supposed to do? You can pull it offline. And it's also embedded in this, uh, in, I think it says jobs. When you click jobs, it gives you all these different job descriptions for the nonprofit. Use the flash drive. It's on there, promise. Okay, um, management. Your management is who will manage your program. You might have to have some full-timers, some part-timers, some contractors. And I 
like using contractors more. Does anybody remember why I said using contractors more? Be huh? Look, they're, in, they're more direct costs because you can tie them to the program. But if you hire a bunch of full-timers, they're going to say, well, they're, help, they're doing your regular work. They're not helping this program. But if you hire contractors, you can assign the contractors to work four hours for the program, six hours for the program. Now, if it's a full-day program like child care or transitional housing, then it might be full-time. But when it's not a full-day program, you want <coughs> contractors so that you can make adjustments as you need to. And then that keeps your overall cost from being too high. Because if you put half your budget in salary, nobody's going to want to give you any money. Mm -hmm. So that's why your contractors need to go down low. And people are going to have to learn how to work on contract. I'm on contract. I've been a contract teacher for the last 12 years. So when you, are, when you do your hire, could you tell them up front that they need to be contracted? Mm -hmm. At least when you're Right. Contracted. Right. So you're going to lay all of that out before you would ever pull anybody in. Because that's how you're going to get your money. Your money is going to be based on a 20-hour contract. So you would say 20, uh, let me see, um, 20 hours is 50% FTE, which is 50% of part of full-time. Or um, you might say part-time, 20-hour week. This is when you're writing out your budget. Because there's two different budgets that you create. One is the budget, which is just numbers. And then the other one is the budget narrative, which is the story of how you're spending the money. But I told you from in the very first class, the budget is sometimes, most times not even counted as far as the points when they're adding up whether or not you get the grant. So don't worry if you're not a mathematician. That's, if it is counted, it's only 10 points out of 100. But don't um, not go look for a sample budget like what you're trying to create because it's already out there. And then you project your numbers. Yes. The employees that don't do the half time. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget the exact number of hours, but say they have to do an hour less because otherwise you have to put benefits in. Mm -hmm. I'm the numbers in. I, but we have to take that into consideration in making this out. Um, if they're working 39 hours, they might as well be full time. So I would just put them on contract rather than on an hourly salary of 39 hours, 40. They would be on contract. Then contractors, you're, you're not paying benefits unless that becomes a part of your organization. So in most cases, it's going to be contractors. Yeah, unless it's part of the negotiation. It doesn't have to be in there. Right. You can give contractors benefits if you choose, but if I were you, I would take a look and see how other people are doing it. Yeah. Well, the one thing you don't want to do is give a contract laborer benefits because the IRS will hurry up and convert that into Say they're employee. Say they're an employee. Yeah. Now, do you have embedded in any of your... Uh, flash drive, a uh, sample contract for services rendered? No, I don't have a, a contract. That's something that you can easily find. That's in my starter business class. Okay. But um, I don't have that in the, the grant. This is grant writing. Um, but that is something that you can find out online. It's not hard to find the contract. What I do have in here is some um, forms, but I don't think the contract is one of them. Um, and it may be, I've got a whole, uh, there's a list of forms in there. I'll try to go and show you where that is. Keep that in mind. Uh, so let me finish this and I'll try to show you where the forms are that are embedded. I will give you one that would uh, be used specifically for nonprofit. A contract for services rendered. So you can have that I, for your class. Okay, if you want to be part of this one, that's fine. I'll do that for... UMKC because the grant writing, I have to focus on grant writing and we'll never get through it. Okay. So, and that's not really a part of grant writing, that's the finance part, which I don't really get into the financial part, except for doing the basic budget. I understand. Yeah, just doing the basic budget. Because then uh, they'll have me downtown, like they did before. I was downtown with the trustee's office because I was doing bankruptcies. I was one of the baddest bankruptcies. 
uh, people in the country. <laughs> My people would go down there and every I was dotted, every T was crossed, they had everything. The judge was like, who did this? <laughs> and they called me downtown. <laughs> and, okay, yeah, they called me downtown. So I had to go down and, and tell them, well, I'm only charging $250. They said, in Kansas City, we only allow you to charge $150. So if you're going to do bankruptcy, you have to charge $150. And I think that's because they wanted you to stop. And guess what? I had to stop. Because a bankruptcy is more work than a grant. But what I got out of it, I loved helping people. I loved seeing people delivered from that. And you know, a lot of people got there and it really wasn't no fault of their own. And uh, But I had to stop. So I, I tried not to get into areas because I had to sign a contract with them that I would not do anything. So I don't give legal advice. And I don't give too much on the accountant side because I'm, I'm not an accountant. So I do what I do, and that's grant writing. And so I can teach the grant writing part, and I can be basic on the budget, but I don't do the contract at all. Okay. All right. So, um, but as far as giving a copy, we can definitely embed that if that's something that's needed. Um, did we talk about management? Where are, let me see, where are we? Okay, we did talk about budget. We're budget. Okay. Oh, and I've already showed the budget. So this is basically this form. It makes grant writing so much simpler. If you start here, rather than starting at the beginning when we're doing all of those forms and all of that, this is so much easier. If you didn't have one already filled out, you could basically go here and fill this out. But you have everything that you need in your hand. Remember, we've already gone through dissemination. Dissemination is how you're going to get the word out to your people. And remember, on one of those earlier slides, you can click Inform, and it'll give you the um, all of the press releases, the areas where you can send out your information to press, to press. And they look at that daily and decide what they're going to cover, so you have to have good headers. Um, and then we're at sustainability. I've already talked about sustainability. Sustainability being how you're going to keep the program going after the grant money is gone. And I think I clicked uh, grants already and showed you some of the grants that's under, under there. And then if we, uh, then we're at the budget. And I'm going to go back and show you guys how to use my budget form. And they're probably going to be good because I've had people offering me money to do it, but I don't want to involve a whole lot of people just yet. <laughs> Great. So, in developing this budget, remember, all you have to do is put the amount in there that you want. You're going to have to project. You don't have a definite budget. But the way you can project is... Now, I hate to get you lost on all these documents again, but I gave you a couple of other documents tonight. Uh, I gave you one pack that has like uh, maybe three or four different grants on it. And let me show you what it looks like. Yes. The first grant is the Telehealth Resource Center Grant Program. Do you see that? Yeah. Is that the first one? Right. That grant, when is the due date? Uh, let's see. Scroll down, close March to the bottom. 16th. It's due March 16th, so you got time to put it together. It is, uh, the maximum that they're giving out is $4 million. How many awards are they giving out? It's above that CFDA number, 93.211. For telehealth programs, how many are they giving out? 14. So let me tell you what telehealth is. If you drive down 435, uh, St. Luke's has a sign saying, we'll come to your house for $49 a month. Are they going to come to your house? No. They're going to have you take your cell phone, snap a picture of whatever's wrong with your arm, and they're going to tell you on the telephone what's wrong with you. What is that called? It's telehealth. Mm. Wow. That's why they're saying that 50% of, no, 90% of the doctor visits that you do right now will not be done after 2020 or 2030. 90% will not be done because you can snap a picture of it and they'll do just like they do now. Guess what's wrong with you and tell you at home. Okay. And you go pick up your prescription or they send it right to your door through 
Uber telehealth. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> telehealth, telehealth is great. How does that affect you? Almost everybody in here doing anything should be offering some type of program for telehealth. Because we have a lot of people that have been introduced to how to use computers for that kind of thing, and you're getting ready to be bombarded with it whether you want it or not. That's going to be the way they bring down health care costs. So the churches need to be teaching it, the, the neighborhood community centers need to be teaching how to do uh, telehealth. It's called diversity telehealth. There's grants out there for that. So they're giving out 14. Let's go to the next one. That, these are real grants that are available right now. The next grant is, uh, what is the due date? This one due February 15th. They're giving out 150,000 is the maximum that you can get. And uh, the minimum you can ask for is 30000 It's for for-profits, non-profits, county governments, city governments. And this one is the Promotion of Humanities Challenge Grant, Creating Humanities Communities. And they're giving money for doing lots of different creative things. It's discretionary, which means that they can use it for a lot of different programs. So just think about that. If you want to try one, I'm giving you something you can try. Um, the next one I had already kind of talked about in here, so just know it's in your packet. Now let's go to this. If you were interested in, now it says veterans up at the top, that's because the first time I printed one out, I printed one out for veterans. Did, did you find this one? You should have this Was one. Was that from today? Mm -hmm. yes. This is from today. Okay. It's the third that document that you should have gotten today. Packet of three that you picked up. Okay. It's got quite a few pages to this one, and they're front and back. These are all current grants. Hot off the press. Look in the third column. That is the amount they're giving away. Look in the fourth column where the pound sign. That tells you how many grants they're giving away. If you flip through this, some of these things are giving away 5,000 grants. 600 grants, and some of them giving away one or two. If they're giving away one or two, I'm not too interested in that. If they're giving away 45, 50, 100, 500, 1,000, I'm more interested. Unless it t totally matches what I'm doing. Like the veterans don't have any number behind That means that. Um, they may not have set the budget for that one just yet, but it is open. So there, sometimes there are no, there's no ceilings and no floors. So, but I wouldn't focus on those. I would focus more on the ones that have the numbers. How did I get this document? I'm going to show you how, and that's going to be the last thing I do besides answer questions. But if you wanted one of those grants, all you would do is put the amount that you want in this form, and this form generates your grant. But there are two different budgets that you've got to be concerned with. One is your wish list budget. That's what you want your organization to be like when the fat lady sings at the end. So if you want it to be 2.5 million, 3 million, you need to work with that. How do you get to that? By knowing how much you want to end up with and multiplying that by how many hours you want to work. 40 hours, 80 hours. If you want to work 40 hours, you multiply it by 10. The amount you want to put in your pocket, remember? Mm -hmm. If you want to work 80 hours, which means you're going to work a whole lot, and you're going to take some contracts and jobs and everything as a part of your organization, <coughs> then you multiply it by 5. So that would give you your wish list budget for your whole organization. So when they ask you for your total operating budget, that's how you get your total operating budget. Now, if you don't have the income streams to meet that $200,000, you've got to create them. You've got to come up with it. You've got to do more programs, more services, give more, do more, raise more money. Whether you're a for-profit or non-profit, it works the same way. So once you figure out what that amount is, you do the, use this for that budget. But then when you put that budget together and you know exactly what you're looking for, because this is going to tell you exactly what you're looking for, 
If you are going to per to an organization and asking them to pay for your personnel and fringe benefits, you would put the thirty-six thousand up there where the hundred thousand is, and it will generate a budget for you, so that you can allot whatever amount. Like not, not, let me t not say that. If you just want personnel, you're going to show them your budget and where the personnel comes from. But if you're doing a budget for a program that's going to pay a few salaries, it's going to pay some other things, then that's when you would take those numbers and put them up top. Let me make sure I, I get that clear. If you're going after this line item, you don't need a new budget. You're just going to show them you need $36,000 for personnel and French benefits. If it's the type grant that pays for that. But if you are starting a new program within your program, within your $2 million program, and you want this grant to pay for the whole program, that's when you take that amount and put it up here. So that program is going to cost you $30,000. You would put that $30,000 up there, and that's going to tell you how much you can allot for salaries. It's going to tell you how much you can allot for travel and everything else. Let's say you're going to do $35,000. That's when you would change that number at the top. But if you just want a line item down here, you're asking somebody, you have the Coffee Foundation to pay you $5,250 of your supplies. You would just take that number and show them where you got it from. So this is your total budget. <coughs> now we hope your total budget is more than $35,000. So let's say your total budget is um, Did I go crazy? Is that 1.5 million? Yeah, I think it is. So here's what your budget looks like. So if you were asking for somebody to take care of the travel for the nurses that's going to go out and teach people how to do telehealth, that would be $30,000. You would ask for that line item. But if you're asking somebody to pay for you 100% of your telehealth program, and your telehealth program you think is going to cost $1.5 million, you would put that up there and let it generate your budget. This is in your temple. I mean, on your flash drive. It is on your flash drive. It will do any amount you put in there and give you the right numbers for the top and the bottom. So budgets don't have to be a headache anymore. Amen. So if you're doing a line item, put the total for your budget up here and just pull the line item. You want somebody to pay for your equipment? Your equipment's $30,000? All you're doing is telling them you want $30,000. Because they're going to ask you, what is your organizational budget? That would be $1.5 million. What is the amount that you need for this program? What it, would that be if you're trying to get equipment? That would be $30,000. But if you're starting a new program under that organization that's going to cost $100,000, you would put the $100,000 up there for it to generate what all of your expenses are going to be. Is, is that clear? I'm hoping that's clear. And you can do that with this. So your budget shouldn't be a headache anymore. And this is a line to right now what the government standards are. The percentages that are built in here are aligned to what the government's percentages are. Now, when, when it's finished, it's going to be tied to the government's changes. So as theirs change, this will change. Right now, it's not tied to that. But eventually, it will be tied to that. So you just have a beta test right now. But it is not for sale, it is not for copy, it is not for duplication. Neither is the grant that I gave you. I gave it to you because I want you to be successful. Because you're going to give somebody a recommendation. Right now, I don't need no recommendation. I'm just telling you. I don't need any. I got several people in several different states that I am working with right now. And my goal now is to only take people who have gotten to the point to where they're really ready for a grant writer. A lot of people are not ready for a grant writer. They, want, they need a consultant. Uh, so as far as grant writing, I am not taking new grant people unless they are in a certain place. They already have their collaborative. The things that I've told you about, they have their five collaborative team. They have their goals, their mission statements, their objectives. You know, th those are the kind of people that I'm, I'm taking at this point. So questions? <laughs> okay. What if you don't see a grant that actually addresses? Oh, okay. She made me remember. Okay. So, 
I can't sit here and tell you that there's going to be a grant that's going to definitely address exactly what you want. Remember I told you you got to be a little bit flexible. And so I'm going to go to grants.gov and I'm going to show you how to generate that same form that I just generated. So if I search grants and I put in um, transitional, let me see, I can't see this so I got to T-R-A-N-S-I-T-I-O-N-A-L. My fingers can spell. I can't, especially when I can't see it. Okay. Transitional living. Okay. Transitional living. I'm going to do a search. And it's going to give me a list of grants. This one gave me 24. But it's giving me forecasted grants. Remember how I said you have to project? I don't want no projected grants. I want those grants that are already available. So whatever your topic is, you put your topic in here. But now you got to know your program well enough to know what the appropriate words are to put in here. Um, I put in homeless and I got all kinds of grants. I put in veterans and I got all kinds of grants. So you may have to narrow it down to what it is that you're doing. So I put transitional living and I've got 24, 25, no, 161 grants. So I took off the forecasted grants and I'm going down and I'm going to say that I only want grants because it gave me grants and cooperative agreements. But for transitional living, you probably want the cooperative agreements because that means they pay you every month or whatever. So I'm going to have to leave those in. And then if I go down here and say that I only want the ones that are good for the 501c3, I'll click this button. So that's going to cut off some of them. So that leaves 54. And then if I go down here and I'm looking for something in in particular, it gives me education, environment, food, nutrition, health, any of those that you're looking for, you can leave those click. And then if you're looking for a particular agency, it has the agencies. Now here is the list of grants that I ended up with. And that's still 54 grants. And you have to read these titles to see if there's anything in there that kind of seems similar. That's the hardest part. The grant writing is not the hard part. Finding the grant that is good for you is sometimes the difficult part. And that's why I put in your, um, in your, on your flash drive, there's a place called um, non-government um, organizations. I can't remember what it's called, but it's in the flash drive. You click it, it'll give you some grants by category. And that really helps when you kind of can categorize those. Write this down. This is another secret that I use for grant writing when I'm trying to locate grants. Because um, there is, I, I'm giving you as thorough a grant writing class as I can. Grant hunting is a class all in itself. <laughs> um, but you have enough on that flash drive to be able to do it. This might help. And I think I said this the other night, but now that you had the whole thing, it might it may mean a little more to you. When you look for grants, you want to put in um, Missouri Grants 2017 um, for whatever. You want to put in the state grant the year for whatever program, product, or service you're trying to find money for. Now that is before the end of June. After June, you want to put in the next year. You probably still going to get some current grants, but you're going to get the grants from the next year as well. So starting in July, I'm going to put in grants from 2018. Um, exactly. The other thing that you need to write down is national grants. What was the rest of that? <coughs> national grants. You don't have to add Missouri because now we're going national. National, national grants 2017 for whatever program you're looking for. Instead of grants, you could put RFPs. National RFPs. Because sometimes when you put the word grants, those hackers are out there with their daggers, ready to hack your computer. But if you put RFPs, FOAs, they're less likely to do it. 
RFP stands for Request for Proposal. Now that is a part of the instruction in your flash drive. If you want to go back to that, it, it's highlighted and it gives you explanations of what those are. RFP just stands for Request for Proposal. What that is, is the funder is trying to ask you to ask for their money. Request for Proposal. What is FOA? FOA is Funding Opportunity Announcement. Mm. Funding Opportunity Announcement. Mm. There are some others, but those are the most prevalent ones that you will be looking at. Funding Opportunity Announcement. They want you to ask for their money. Mm. Okay. Then if you find a grant that is pretty close, do you click on that and that's when the template comes up or how how do you reach the template that you actually need to fill out for it? Okay. Um, we we went through this initially, but I'm thinking you may not have had enough information to really catch on. So I'm going to show you again now, and I think it'll mean a little bit more to you. Um, let's see, where is that in, on the, in your book? So you can kind of get an idea of where you would be looking on the flash drive. Say the question again so I make sure I don't get out. To actually apply for the grant. Okay, so I'm going to go to one of these grants on here. There were some really good ones on here. Uh, construction of state home facilities. Yeah. There is a grant out there for constructing community facilities through USDA. I certainly want, um, you might want to look that up. It's, I don't have a copy of that one. But it's for constructing facilities that are going to offer services to low income people and the public. And they're really for rural, but they're also for inner city. So we miss out a lot of times because we don't know that it's also for us. Constructing for? Construction for community facilities through USDA. But I'm going to try to go to one of these grants on here, um, State Veterans Home Construction Grant Program. I think I saw that. And the word rural did come. Yeah, a lot of them will have rule, but you have to read the fine print because the fine print will say and other areas, you know, that serve low income. So you have to kind of watch it on those. Uh, uh, let me use one of these because I need one that has that uh, CFDA number so I can actually find it. I'm going I'm to pull the telehealth because it's something that I can pull a number on. Uh, I'm sure there is. There's grants out there for everything. You just have to, who would be interested in giving that kind of grant? It would be somebody like GNC who's going to end up benefiting from it. So that's what you have to think about. Uh, you know, when people go to the, when, when the politicians, when people go to the politicians to ask them to lobby for something, Who's going to the politicians to ask them to lobby for different things, for grants? The companies. The companies go to the government and say, hey, we need you to pass this, that, and the other. Scholastics goes to the government and say, we need you to uh, promote this curriculum because this is the only curriculum that's going to help kids. Who is benefiting from that curriculum? Scholastics. When the pharmaceuticals companies go to the politician and tell them, you need to promote this medication, because this medication does this, that, or the other, who's going to benefit from that? The pharmaceutical company that goes and, and so they wine and dine them, they take them to whatever, and then they get those grants passed. GNC would be one that would go for, for um, or, or Whole Foods or whatever. They would go. So when you're looking for grants, you're looking for grants that have been lobbied by those kind of people. I mean, that's just the way of the world. I learned that when I um, was applying for grants in the very beginning, that those grants don't just come up because somebody wants to help somebody a lot of times. Those grants come up because those politicians, I mean, because those businesses go to Washington and tell them what they want them to promote. And that's what they promote. And that's where the grants come from. 
That's where the gramps come from. When the anthrax scare was out, and the kids were, you know, everybody was talking about anthrax, I said, well, let me look at the stock market. I can tell you who's behind the anthrax scare. And their stock was going through the roof. Um, it was a pharmaceutical company. Of course. Uh, oh. Same way they both. Yeah, because I was doing a radio show one time just talking and somebody sent to my phone, Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was just somebody joking, but uh, but uh, anyway, because <laughs> sometimes I mean it's really going in. Okay, but that was true. Their for that pharmaceutical company, their stocks went through the roof during that time. Uh, telehealth. So if you want to know what questions they're going to ask, they have an application up here, and for the federal, it will be in the package. But for all of those other foundations that's on your flash drive, you're gonna just you can just click those, and that takes you usually to their application. Or when you put in FOA or um, RFP, it will take you to the application. Like Ford's app, Ford Foundation, their application is on their website. All of their applications are gonna be on their website, and their applications are only gonna be about five pages and. You know, it's just uh, a few links to click. I mean, it's, it's not very much. So uh, this package, let's see, let me go to related documents because I'm, okay, they may have it somewhere else. If it doesn't show up there, then let me click here and go down to the bottom. Uh, this one, may, maybe it was forked, maybe it's not ready yet because I'm not seeing the actual app. Because this is where it's supposed to be, right here. Um, Let's see, the awarding agency has not posted the opportunity for submission through grants.gov. So let me go, it might be in another agency, because some of them don't go through grants.gov. That's why you have to make sure that you go both ways. Sometimes go to grants.gov, sometimes just go out to Google. Because if you're just trying to find grants on grants.gov, you may strike out. But now, here is the application guidance. Mm -hmm. So it is available. The grants.gov has it on their website, but they don't have the information. And I have always thought, okay, that grant's not available. But I found that is not true. Sometimes they're doing all kinds of tricks with these grants, so you gotta keep trying. You can't just say, okay, it's not available. You gotta keep looking. If we read this, and it says this grant is not due until March 16th, you gotta trust that it's gonna be due March 16th and just keep looking until you find that app. And maybe typing in some different things. So here is the template down here. And this is gonna give you their instructions. Now the best of these. You're covering that. Uh, oh, sorry. The best of these is going to tell you this one allows up to 300, what, 25,000 per year, up to 12 regional grants, up to two national grants. The amount they're giving out is $4,550. Um, the project period is from September 1st through August 31st of uh, 2017. No, so this was, uh, this was uh, 2016, so there's another one. This one was the old one from 2016, but we can still kind of look and see how it's going. So the application guide, and this is what I normally look for when I'm doing any kind of grant. I look for this table of contents, because in this table of contents, there are two <laughs> different areas that I'm looking for to find out what they want. Look at this one. The project abstract, which is all so-called executive summary. The project narrative, the budget, the budget justification, which is the budget narrative, and the attachments. That's what this grant wants. Remember that information I gave you? I told you you're not going to need it all. You're only going to need some of it. This one only wants some of it. No. No, you don't. You can. A home office is good 
for every, for almost everything, unless you're doing, I mean, unless you're trying to bring a whole bunch of people to your house. So what you need to see on here is, are you eligible? The cost sharing and match. I went over the little form in your book that says the things that you have to have. Well, this is where you find all that information out for all, for any federal grant. It will be listed in their application. And then the review criteria is the other thing. If y'all can hang with me till I show you this, because this uh, will answer. It's page 31. Let me see if I can hear him get to it. Or did it say 31? What was that page? The review criteria was 18? 18. Okay. Here's the review criteria. Remember I told you about the points? This one, the need statement, how many points? Ten points. Um, the response, the methodology, the work plan, the logic model, remember? They're all the same thing. That logic model is worth 35 points. We go on down. The evaluation is worth five points. There are questions, the appropriateness of personnel completing program assessment and the effectiveness of the methods proposed to uh, monitor and assess the project results. That's the outcome. It's the same stuff you already have, but you just have to go through their rules and they tell you how many points. That's only worth five points. The impact, the outcome, who's it going to help? That is worth 20 points. So every federal grant will tell you how many points you're going to get. But when you're doing the little foundation grants for up to $250,000, they're not really, theirs is not near this tough. This is federal. But this is not bad either. You just break it up and do it piece by piece and put it together. You've got the information already. This is a federal grant. You got it. You just have to put your own name in it. Yes, sir. I have a question separate from, from this. You said the other day you were going to have some information uh, for us about being able to expand to all the states. Ah, uh, okay. Um, can you, uh, I want, okay. I'll just send that to you and you meet with them. Will you meet with them again? Because yes. I didn't do that. And I will do it right now, but for those who have to leave, um, maybe you can let him know because it only take me a minute to find it. I think because it's on one of my other it's on one of my other classes. I teach that I think in the um, starting a nonprofit or business class. So I just have to find it right here. Right here. Was that something we're going to put on our flash drive or a website? You just need to get. It's just a website. Okay. It's just a website. It's not normally something I teach in this class, but it is something that you need to. Know. Yes. Yeah. My last question. <laughs> okay, and while you ask that, I'll see if I can find it. Okay. Say you got a grant for $100, and uh, throughout uh -huh. that year you only used, well, I'm just going to use Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, I really mean $2 million, Okay, but, all right, yeah, that's right. And okay. you only used $80. So that other $20, do you have to return that, or would that be able to go you into have to your return foundation. it or you have to contact them and let them know the change okay. and usually they will tell you that you have to send it back mm -hmm. in fact I got a when I first went to housing authority I got a lot of money from agencies that was about to lose it because they hadn't followed the uh, instructions okay. lots of states lose money every year because they don't have the programs um, it takes creativity and ingenuity to make create programs mm -hmm. you guys are the exception to the rule most people don't have talent like that. It takes creativity and ingenuity and tenacity to to want to start a program. So don't take that lightly. Everybody don't have that. So know that what you have is valuable because most of you are talking about doing something that's going to help our community. And if you're talking about doing something that's going to help our community, that's why they're getting the tax dollars. So why not get some of that to do what you're doing anyway? We do it all the time. We just don't know where the money is to get. We're helping our people. We house our nephews, nieces, cousins, grandmas, uh, uncles, everybody in the community. My grandmother felt fed everybody in the community and, and never got a dime from it. But people were collecting money. 
to do those programs and services, but they didn't want to go to the neighborhood to, you know, to do that. So what you're doing is valuable. You have to convince stakeholders that they have a vested interest to invest in you. Foundations are uh, people setting up their 501 3C. Mm -hmm. In what you had to do recently, were you required to do e verification? To do to, what? Uh, to, to be certified. E verification has something to do with the federal government if you want to receive federal dollars, which simply I says you're not that, hiring. A I showed you that uh, in the template. Uh, it is there. Well, it's, it's on grants.gov. We went to grants.gov and I showed you where it is. And it is not a really easy process for the feds. You don't have to do that for the foundation. Well, some of the foundations are starting to require it, but not very many. Um, you go to grants.gov. If you remember, it said applicant registration. Do you remember when I was showing you that? That's what she's talking about. And it was five steps. And I said those five steps look easy, but, and, and they're not hard, it's just that you have to have all of your information there. Remember that I talked about the SIC codes, the NIC, that's what I was talking about, that registration. So it's on grants.gov. Now this is the website for registering your organization. Did everybody get that? It's uh, www.nascoment.org. This is a multi-state registration service so that you can solicit funds from all 50 states. And I'll just quickly show you the grants.gov again. So you'll know it is in your book, but, and it's on your flash drive. So here you go to applicant, and then you go to uh, organization registration. Here are the five steps that she's talking about so that you can be ready to apply for federal grants. It takes about two weeks, I said, to register. So you want to get started ASAP if you haven't already. You do, you do need a checking account in the name of the organization because when they send out grant checks, they only send them to the name of the foundation or the organization, whoever it is. So if you haven't gotten your checking account, you need to do that first.